Uh, Jose, how about uh, at HHS? On your opening, you gave us a lot of examples of different activities that are going on. Uh, see if you can narrow down to one specific program that you'd like to highlight where you guys are really going big. I mean, HHS Protect is the largest you know, public health surveillance system in the history of the United States. Um, it, it gives us the ability to sp speed up clinical trials. It, it gives us the ability to uh, distribute remdesivir. We're using it for that. Uh, it gives us the ability to predict outbreaks um, you know, at every single level across the U.S. I can literally look at the little hospital in the rural uh, location that I grew up with in northeastern Pennsylvania. I can see how many ventilators they have, how many beds they have. I can, you know, how many total beds they have, how many patients have COVID-19, if there's any patients uh, in those hospitals. Uh, one of the things that we've done um, with the data in HHS Protect, and you can see it if you go to a protect dash people.hhs.gov, we've started to dashboard and share all of the data uh, related to the common operating pitch around hospitals. Um, we, we, dashboard all the, we dashboard the raw data and then we dashboard estimates so that we can extrapolate that raw data across the entire United States off of the five, you know, the 5,000 hospitals we have every day. And hospital reporting varies every day. That's why the number uh, doesn't say the same, stay the same. We've also taken those raw data sets, made them downloadable on healthdata.gov, outlined the steps with which we build our predictive models, and added in policy insights that are occurring at the federal and state level across the United States. So the community um, of modelers and the community of researchers and the scientists of the future that are at universities can literally work with real-time data across the United States about this pandemic to hone their craft. So when Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks and Dr. Redfield retire someday, we will, there'll be a community of folks that can carry the baton if, a, if an event like this occurs again. We're, we're really proud about that. We're working uh, in, to partner with associations across the United States to share the data with NHHS Protect. We're talking about 4 billion health data elements, federal, state, local, zip code, and county level we're going to make, we need from a public health surveillance perspective, uh, but we can make it available to associations and companies um, so that they can lower their fixed costs related to collecting data, or related to whether it's running clinical trials or whether it's informing hospitals as to the environmental uh, activities that are actually occurring around them. Again, it's all built off of HHS Protect. You know, we've, I, I have to say this, I'm so proud of the OCIO team at HHS. We've lowered our operating expenditures by 12%. Our budget has increased by 170% because of COVID. We've increased our customer service scores by 40%. So now 67% of our customers think we're excellent versus 20, 27%. Um, and we've managed to uh, identify and drive cost avoidance of about $200 million across the portfolio. Um, so all while building the largest public health surveillance system in the history of the United States and, and working, and I have to thank the Verizon folks for this. Um, and, and we've dealt with some very large cyber events since March, uh, and we built a modern MTIC uh, to secure the perimeter of HHS, which is one of the largest internets on the face of the earth. Um, and we, you know, we were able to do that in 120 days at a 74% discount off of uh, commercial pricing. So, I, you know, we've, we have a lot going on. The biggest program is HHS Protect, but I'm really proud of the team. We've done a number of amazing things to be able to